The subject is the market, the market for land. As Ray Brownfield is back with us this weekend, his firm is Land Pro LLC. Ray, I was reminiscing the other day, I was thinking back of when I was a young farm broadcaster. I had stopped in the town of Kentland, Indiana at the New Joy restaurant, having a piece of pie at the New Joy, and the boys were saying, have you heard? The Brazilians have been in. They're <laughs> buying farm ground right here in our area. And that was such a big topic of discussion. In reality, there wasn't at that time much for an investment in farmland. But what about now? You know, compared to the 70s in the Cold War area, we did have a lot of Germans, a lot of Europeans came over at that point thinking they're going to escape the, whatever was going to happen at that point in time. Since then, a lot of those people sold back and took their money back to Europe and reinvested in that area. Today, uh, there's some. We don't see a lot. Uh, you might say, well, the Chinese, are they big? If they are, I'm not seeing it. There may be certain little areas of the country that they are. We do see some in the Delta. Uh, Argentinians are trying to get their money out of their country. They understand that kind of cropping system in the Delta, and they understand size. Is, those are bigger operations in the plantation type situation. So we sue the Argentinians. They like the soybeans. They like the corn. They want to get their money out of the country. Now, with the change in politics over there in Argentina, maybe that's going to change some for them. But that's really about what we see. Uh, California, you know, some people maybe come out there and they want to get into the vine, you know, the wine business and that sort of thing, a little bit of that perhaps. But overall, I don't see a great avalanche of uh, international money coming into land in the United States. There's been a lot of talk of late about Saudi Arabia being an investor in land of the southwest U.S. and they're producing forage there, exporting that mm. to feed their dairy cows in the Middle East and in essence exporting the water, some are saying, and it's become rather controversial. But generally, you say you don't see Middle East interest much investing in farmland either? I have not. Not to say it doesn't happen, but I usually hear about it in our industry if we see much of it. There is an annual reporting of farmland purchases by foreign entities, is there not? Required by law. Right, there is. And in fact, uh, if any international group or individual comes in, it has to be reported to the Farm Service Administration, USDA, as to the entity, the acres, and uh, some pretty specific information. There are those who are high-profile individuals such as actors and entertainers and politicians who like to buy land sometimes. I know you had a a comedian, an actor who went out with you to look at some land uh, a couple of years ago, a well-known name. Mm -hmm. Do you see much of that? Do you see uh, restaurateurs, food industry executives, uh, some of these, these folks who, who have deep pockets buying land now? They look. Uh, they have agents usually that are out there helping them better invest their money if you can. And uh, the one person we were talking to did buy uh, some really nice Central Illinois farmland, by the way, about five or six years ago, and did quite well. Uh, we don't see a lot of it. It's a highly specialized market. Uh, I do see, I think, the uh, the country western people love to be into Oklahoma, Texas, where they really feel that's their areas in the south, if you will. So they do own some pretty good sized ranches in some areas. Uh, we see in California the actors do like to, and actresses like to be up in that Napa Valley area to buy some vineyards, and it's a, it's a neat thing for them to have. But overall, I don't see a huge amount of that. Finally, in the remaining half minute here, as interest rates creep up, and they haven't done much, and they may not do much for a while, if they start to rise significantly, will they pinch off some of the demand for farmland? I think they're going to have to get at least to the 5 to 6 percent level for that to really happen. Ray, thank you for coming in. It's always great to talk to you. We appreciate the view that you share with a nationwide scope of what's going on with land. Thank you. Take care. Ray Brownfield, Land Pro LLC is his firm. He's located in the community of Oswego, Illinois.